Hello everybody. Uh, I'm making a video about how to uh, create um, or rather how to compile a shell from source um, from uh, Pluto's uh, GitHub repository. So I uh, just you know, had a couple requests from people. I think, I think Pluto may have already made a video doing this, but uh, I, haven't, I haven't actually looked to see, but figured I'd go ahead and make one as well. So um, first step is, uh, you know, we're just going to go to the repository. I'll put the URL in the uh, video description. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got the repository for, uh, for shell. Um, and the instructions are right here in the readme. It's pretty simple. Um, but uh, we're just going to kind of follow them real quick. Um, so and this is the first time I've done it this way. Typically the way I do this is I will, uh, I have the repository uh, cloned on my local machine and I'll use uh, Graybell uh, VS in Visual Studio Code to compile it. Um, although you do have to make a couple of adjustments to the code to get it to work with Graybell. Um, so this will be my first time actually doing it the uh, quote unquote correct way. Um, so yeah, just going through the list here. So it says uh, uh, we need to make a directory slash root slash source. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, I think uh, okay. So we've got that. So we'll come back over here. Um, and then we're going to, uh, looks like we're going to copy some source code into the game and compile them. Um, I think these need to go inside of that uh, root slash source directory. So let's just go through the list. We've got games, uh, 5pk, so that's this one. Um, I think I can just copy it and then uh, we'll come over here in the game. Uh, let's do code editor that and then we'll build this. It's very important uh, that you make it uh, importable. Um, and then we're going to name it, um, I think it was, uh, let's see, we'll come over here and save it in the source. I think it was games.5pk. Just double check that. Uh, yeah, games.5pk. So we'll put that in there. And we'll get the next one, uh, core.5pk.source. So that's this one here. Uh, copy that guy. Use the same one. I'm going to copy and paste that in here. I'm going to save this one. Again, we'll name it. We'll do the allow import. This one is core.5pk. That's core with a K. Uh, let me just double check on that name. Yeah, core.5pk. So we're going to save that. Ooh, did I forget to mark that as, yeah, I'm just going to save over because I don't, don't remember if I marked that as importable, but it's important that we do that. So I'm just going to double check that. Okay. That time I definitely saved it as importable. Um, next we want D tools. Uh, so that's going to be this guy. So we'll copy that. Use the same window again. I'm going to compile it and make it importable, and I believe it was dtools.5pk. Uh, yeah, dtools.5pk. Come back and get the next one, which is, should be sphinx. Uh, sphinx.5pk.source. Copy that guy. And paste that and then we'll come in here, mark it importable and it's Sphinx with a five instead of the S. And let me double check that name, but I believe that's correct. Yeah. And we'll save it again, making sure it's marked importable. Um, let's see. I think the next step is five or is a uh, shell dot uh, five PK. Uh, let's see, so we should have four files, yep, okay, so, um, so we want shell.5pk, uh, is there one we're missing? No, 
All right, there's another one, but it's after this step, so we'll get shelled off 5pk. Um, let me just make sure where to put that. And this one, okay, this one's also going to go into root.source. Um, it imports all the previous ones. So over here, and I'll save that. And let me just, uh, I think this is the right file. I, did I have the wrong thing in the, uh, make sure I had the right stuff copied. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're gonna build this. This one also needs to be importable. And this one's gonna be shell. So that worked, that's good, because that one imports all the others, I believe, so I'm good there. Uh, moving right along, uh, let's see, uh, last one we want is uh, shell.source. Um, so this one can be, this one can be somewhere else. Well, I'm going to put this one in, um, I'll put it in the same place, doesn't really matter. Um, so let me grab that, we got to come over here copy that. I'm going to make a couple of modifications to this uh, before I build it. Um, and this one, obviously, this is the actual shell binary, so we don't we don't need to mark this one as importable. But let's see, one of the things uh, what I'm going to change. Uh, actually, the only thing I'm going to change right now is I'm just going to remove the security section. Um, it's probably not a good idea to do this. Um, but I don't like being prompted to enter uh, passwords all the time, you know, every time I run shell. Um, so uh, oftentimes I will just comment this out, uh, which is, where is it? It's uh, right here. So I believe we can just comment out this whole thing uh, right here. Just comment all of this out. So let's do that. Um, so that just kind of disables the security. So normally, like you would put a password uh, up above or two passwords, and it'll kind of uh, alternate or, or whatever. Pick a random one that you got to enter um, every time you run shell. Uh, commenting this out just disables that. Um, and then you can also, there's another area you can customize here. Actually, you can customize all of this, but another area that's useful to customize is if you um, put in information here for uh, like a remote server, um, you can run uh, Hashim on it and it will, Shell will uh, automatically dump um, credentials to it, any credentials you can upload to uh, a file on the server. Um, and then Hashim can be running on the server and it will uh, automatically decrypt them for you in real time. Um, but I'm not gonna do that in this because I'm just doing this video for how to compile shell from source. Um, I do have a different video in which I make use of that functionality. Um, and if you wanted to do that yourself, this is the place where you would enter that information. Um, but for now, I think this is all we need. So I'm going to build this. Uh, actually, I'm going to save it because uh, I'm going to save it so that I can make it a little smaller uh, in a minute. So for now, I'm just going to save it as shell.source. Um, actually, this is the one I want for that. Uh, let's save it as shell.source. Uh, I am going to compile it now, but I wanted to just save that first. Um, so, okay, so we don't need to make this importable because this is the actual binary. So I'll just name it shell um, and save it. And then I uh, should be able to run it now. Let's see, where are we? Move over under source. If I did everything right, it should dump me into shell, which it did. So excellent. So um, the reason I wanted to save that source code file is I want to show you uh, something you can do with shell. You can do this with any source code, uh, but I'm going to use it on the shell source code itself. Um, so we can just uh, make it smaller and I'll show you why. So uh, right now, 
the shell binary is uh, like 3.85 uh, kilobytes. Is that right? Let's see, we got bytes, megabytes, or bytes, kilobytes, mega, no, 3.85 megabytes. It's a big boy. So um, that's this top one right up here. Um, sorry, right, right there. It's big, right? So I want to make it smaller, and that's what this does. So if I do um, shell.source, uh, let's see, I'm going to look at the syntax for this. Uh, make fit path to source target size in bytes. Okay, so let's do make fit shell dot source and let's do um, 120. Should get us there pretty quick. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to take that source code and compile it, and I think it randomly generates file names until we get one that's under the target file size which is 120 uh, kilobytes. Um, now you can, uh, you know, doing this a um, different way if you if you name your uh, binary, I think the, the smallest file size is just DDDD, um, you'll automatically get 110 kilobytes, which uh, is very small. I think it's the smallest you can get. Um, but this utility is built into shell, um, makes it, you know, kind of easy to, to do. Um, so in a minute here, it should give me uh, a new source code file with a name that is, uh, I think it creates a new source code file with, with whatever name it found, um, and then it also compiles it too, and then renames it uh, to what it should be if we had built it, uh, you know, just directly. Um, so let's see, it's kind of taking a minute here. I'm used to this kind of going a little faster. But it has been a minute since I uh, since I did it this way. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we got it. So um, looks like we got a hundred and we got hundred and ten uh, kilobytes. So if we look at this now, we should have a much smaller uh, binary file for shell, which we do, 110 kilobytes there. It's pretty good. Um, and you can see it created this file, uh, which is the source code, and that's what got compiled um, to find that small file size. Um, so that's that's good. Um, I guess I'll make this video a little longer here. Once you know, first time you run shell, um, you're going to want to run core r. That's going to create your r kit folder um, in slash root. Uh, when you go about, you know, hacking the planet, um, many times you'll have the option to upload the rkit folder to your target and run shell directly on the target. Um, so you run this core-r uh, to create that rootkit file, or the, the rkit folder rather, and that's what ends up getting uploaded. Um, you can include whatever you want in that folder and it'll all get uploaded. So if you put like scanlan in there or like, um, you know, just other useful things to have on the target, they'll all be included uh, when you upload our kit. Um, so that's a good thing to start. Um, another thing to run um, is if you do pwgen dash, uh, I'm trying to think, is it, is it pwgen? Let me look, maybe it's in the, maybe it's in the readme. I think it's, uh, it might just, maybe it's just pwgen. There's a utility you should run. And I know it's for sure, it's definitely pwgen something, and it, it's either pwgen, and then you pipe that into something else, or something else piped into pwgen, I don't remember. But what it does is it uh, generates the, um, uh, it generates the, um, P okay, pwgen uh, piped into pwgen space hash. Um, and what that does is it generates a bunch of uh, password lists, tables. Um, there's a seed list of passwords, and then there's code in shell, which uh, uses a Markov generator to expand that into a list of many, many passwords, which are used for um, brute forcing um, and also for uh, deciphering. When you decipher passwords with Gopher or Hashim, um, you'll notice uh, it doesn't always have that little bar like it's using crypto and it'll go really fast even though even if you don't have fast hardware that's because it's not actually using the crypto library to do the deciphering it's matching the hashes against what is generated by this command 
So if I do pwgen and then pwgen space hash, uh, that should run that. Um, and this takes a few minutes, so I'm not going to wait for this to finish. Um, I'm going to just kind of end this video here. Um, although actually it looks like it's going pretty quick, so I don't know, maybe it won't take that long. But in any case, um, this has been uh, how to build shell from source um, and some of the a uh, couple of the things you should do kind of first thing before you uh, start off using it. Um, thanks. Bye.